One of the most daunting landscapes on earth is that which we find in the interior of Arabia. Lehi and Sariah were dependent on the Lord to bring them through. I believe that it took them about a year to go from their first base camp down to Nahum. The reason is because that's when Nephi mentions the birth of the first children. As I read the text of the Book of Mormon, I suspect that Ishmael was already ill, or had been experiencing ill health, and that that was one of the reasons why the family stopped from time to time to rest, to gather themselves, gather their strength, and then move on. During the Frankenstein uh, uh, trade uh, journey, uh, I suppose that quite a number of people will die, because it's, it was a hard journey, definitely. It wasn't an easy journey. And when they die, uh, they will uh, carry it to the nearest place possible. Ishmael makes it this far south, but Ishmael finally, finally passes away. In Yemen, like in many ancient civilizations, they used to respect the dead very much. They would have buried Ishmael here to great mourning. One of the reasons the people felt to mourn is because he was an Israelite, and to be buried away from his home was something of a loss. The areas to bury were known along the Frankenstein's route. I am sitting in a uh, name burial ground that was discovered in 1994. The people who passed through this uh, area and died, they will bring to, to this burial and burial here whether they were uh, uh, Yemenis or foreigners from the north, from Mediterranean, or from uh, someplace else. They are uh, like small hives or small graves, mounds. And this area where is the uh, burial ground is belonged to the tribe of Neh. It's certain that, that this place had a name before they arrived because Nephi very carefully writes the passive the place which was called Nahum. This is the area of name. Uh, uh, this is the land of name and also the, the area of the tribe of name. The spelling in 1 Nephi 16 is Nahum or Nahum, which has something to do with comfort. In ancient South Arabian, the letters NHM have to do with stone cutting and may possibly refer to the kind of work that the people of this tribe did. The name is supposed to be coming from the root Nahama. And Nahama in ancient South Arabian language means to cut stone. We have to imagine what happened when Lehi and Sarai and their party heard this name after the death of Ishmael, that it meant something to them and they preserved it in the text. The Yemenis have excavated a number of cemeteries in that region, including some that contained uh, mummified remains. The mummies uh, that we found here in Yemen uh, were built differently from uh, the ones in Egypt. The knees are not straight like the Egyptian, and, uh, uh, and also they covered all the body inside very nice leathers. The finding of Nehum strikes me as an, uh, just a, a tremendously significant discovery. The gazetteers of Joseph Smith's day listed no such place. What it really is, is a kind of prediction by the Book of Mormon of something that we ought to find. Now the chances of finding that exact name from that exact time in that exact place uh, by random chance are just astronomical. And to find it in the right location at the right time is a really striking bullseye for the book and there are those who say that the book has no archaeological substantiation that's a spectacular substantiation right there it seems to me something that would have been unexpected that it's so unlikely that Joseph Smith could have woven into his story on his own the Book of Mormon has text 
has made a complex prediction and modern archaeology actually confirms that prediction. It's a direct bullseye, as precise as you could wish it to be. There are inscriptions from the Temple Baran at Marib that date to the 6th century BC that talk about individuals from Nahum. So the region was known at the time of Lehi and was called that at that period of time. The temples that were uncovered there are actually from Lehi's own time frame. But then to find the altars with uh, references to Nahum on them, dating from 600 BC, was just spectacular. Certain ruins or remnants of that temple were uncovered, including three altars, all of which carry this inscription, Nahum. You couldn't have asked for a neater proof that the name was there in the right place at the right time when, when it was supposed to be there for Lehi's group passing through. The witnesses tell us that Joseph didn't even know that the city of Jerusalem had walls around it. Well, if he didn't know that there was a wall around Jer Jerusalem, he certainly didn't know that there was a city or a site out in Yemen called Nahum. The idea that Joseph Smith, for example, was really well-versed on, on uh, pre-Islamic Arabian geography or customs in the desert seems to me so ludicrous as to simply be beyond belief. One has to ask the question, how could Joseph Smith possibly have known Nahum? 